Well, good morning. It's uh, certainly a pleasure and a privilege to be in front of you today and talking about uh, the importance of the role and potential of communities in improving population health. And addressing this topic is nothing if it didn't have a face on it because of all of our discussions at the Institute of Medicine uh, Population Health Roundtable being very scientific and rigorous, um, we are no closer to the community than we are now in terms of uh, touching on really where health happens, where the rubber meets the road. Um, and so to lend a face to this um, topic, I'll offer my own. I grew up just a couple of miles from here in a community in areas of Los Angeles that uh, didn't produce the most uh, successful people, but in fact had lots of trouble during life. I had the good fortune of being involved in an Office of Economic Opportunity program with other uh, teenagers from the Latino community. And we formed a group called Chicanos for Creative Medicine at Medi LAC USC Medical Center on Sunday afternoons when most other people were either playing or watching football or out in the community doing other things about 15 of us got together for several years in a row, helped each other, studied, uh, took mentorships with the few Latinos that were around the medical center at the time. Um, and as a result of this activity, we got involved in helping to establish a community health clinic in East Los Angeles um, and mentoring programs for kids younger than us. But it didn't stop there. Um, of those 15 kids uh, at the time, 12 of them ended up in health careers. Uh, and most of those 12 have become civically engaged at various forms. One ran for state office. Uh, one of them is the head of a, uh, of the, a medical director in a health plan. Others have become nurses and f uh, physician assistant in migrant uh, clinics. Uh, and then in my own career, and you can read it from the bi biography there, going on and working in public health and in family medicine, the National Health Service Corps, uh, third world countries and then coming back and working in, in uh, public health and, and philanthropy, uh, we have all been, been able to give back to our communities in innumerable ways, uh, although coming from humble beginnings, um, uh, we, the trajectory required policy, required some resources and confidence that investing in youth, investing in community, uh, and investing in population health in that kind of way uh, can return great dividends in terms of, uh, of, li of the lifelong trajectory to a, a productive life, civic engagement, um, uh, improving health along the way because we, we ended up, many of us, in health careers uh, and, and in giving back to the community through uh, civic in engagement. Um, all of these ways are the return on investment for uh, engaging communities and engaging youth in creating better population health. So we have, a dis we have uh, three distinguished uh, individuals on this panel about uh, how young people contribute to community health and well-being. Um, their bio sketches are included in the attendee packet that you have, um, but uh, we'd, we'd like to make sure that they have enough time to uh, give their presentations and then we'll hold our questions at the end and give you plenty of opportunity to, to ask them uh, what you will or to make your comments. Uh, panelists typically have about 20 minutes, but our first two speakers will share 30 because they're representing the same organization. So uh, I've asked our staff to give us uh, five minutes and uh, one minute uh, warning. So we'll abide by those and, uh, and then after that we'll have sufficient time for, uh, for discussion. Um, first, um, I'd like to, uh, to hear from Kimberly LaCrosse, a community organizer and the director of Jóvenes Sanos at United Way of Santa Cruz, uh, and Jose Joel Vasquez, a youth leader at Jóvenes Sanos. Uh, 